Good day, my lovelies. I am so grateful that you had stumbled or pressed on this video. My name is Alexandre May, but everyone calls me a May. And welcome to Paint and Chats. This is that one. Today we will be exploring the life of Walter Keane. Cool. I thought we were filming in 20 minutes. What are you talking about? What are you doing? I am filming. No, I did these paintings. Oh, I think you got a little too much into the research this week, don't you? The lady I'm about to introduce is an artist. She is best known for her expressive, wide-eyed children. Although she began her career in art as a child growing up in Tennessee, she is now a resident of Honolulu. Let's welcome Margaret Keene. Thanks, Cole. So if that bit didn't really make much sense to you, Trust, it will make sense by the end of this video. Hello and welcome. I am so happy and blessed you're here and you got to meet my husband, Cole. Today, I have a very, very special video for you. We will be exploring the life of the amazing Margaret Keith. I will admit though, this video is gonna be pretty biased and I must admit the information I have gathered can be found in my description below and I'm just gathering all this information and telling you the story through my eyes. As per usual, and if you've never seen one of my videos before, please check them out. Um, I'm here in my little studio in Ontario to kind of do what I normally do with my students, which is talk about the life of artists so we can hopefully learn from the mistakes and be inspired in our own creative journey. So this week, we're gonna talk about Margaret Keene and I am so excited. I will be using this source image of beautiful Margaret. Uh, this is kind of more of a recent picture of her, of her. And also, fun fact, this is the first video that I do that the artist is still living. I've always kind of known about Margaret Keene growing up as I received so many knockoffs of her paintings from my grandmothers. And when the film by Tim Burton came out, I found myself disappointed and be the only person in my circles excited about the flip. I highly recommend to watch it. It's amazing and a true love letter to Margaret from Burton. Everyone did such an amazing job. Even Chris Waltz made me like her husband, the one that shall not be named. Okay. So his name is Walter, but you get the point. I will leave a link to the trailer in the description below. Also, if you think you know everything about this story because you watched the movie, or you don't think you care, trust me, you do. She is Tim Burton's favorite artist and changed the art game. Oh, yeah. And she had to prove that she was, in fact, the creator of her own work. So sit back, relax, grab a canvas, our snack, and we will dive right into the person who inspired a generation of alt kids after this foreshadowing commercial break. Margaret was born on September 15, 1927 in Nashville, Tennessee, America. She was born, according to my sources listed below, Peggy Doors Hawkins. At the age of only two years old, her eardrum was damaged due to a mastoid operation, which led to the little girl to observe people's body language and eyes to understand them. Always very artistic, little Margaret started drawing at a very young age. She would end up taking art classes at the Watkins Art Institute at only 10 years old. Her first painting, is told, is of two little girls, one crying and the other one laughing, which is a present she ended up giving to her grandmother. Little Margaret would become well known in her local church community due to her sketches of angels with big eyes and floppy wings. She would go on to attend the Trapahangan, I'm not sure, how do you say that? Trap Trapahagan? Trapan? Trapanan? I'll figure it out. School of Design in New York City when she was 18 years old. 
I couldn't find much information on her parents, but it seems like they were super supportive and she probably grew up in a more well-off family, as let's be real. Paying for an art education in those days wasn't the most logical thing to do if you needed employment, yet there's always the perspective that she was a woman of her time. So how else is she going to find a husband? But honestly, I have no clue, as that part of her life isn't accessible to a little artist like me in Northern Ontario. She got married at around the age of 21 to Frank Richard Oldridge. He would end up being an abusive man and they were wed from 1948 to 1955. The best thing to come out of this relationship was definitely the birth of her only child, Jane. Born on April 15, 1950, Jane would go on to be by her mother's side during every step of the way. Kept in the dark for most of what her mother was going through, but from experience, I know she knew exactly what was going on. Point to retain is that the two were very close, and still are today. It was also hard to find information on Jane. But from what I can gather, she is also probably maybe an artist. <laughs> but definitely helps her mom with business and can be seen with Margaret at events. I'm a little sad and I don't know more about Jane, but I respect the privacy. I feel for Jane as a child who had a single mom. I want to know her perspective. Margaret would pack up her and Jane's things in 1955 after multiple attempts and finally ran away from her abuser and drove to San Francisco. Painting up there. Woo! So I got a super rough sketch done of my lovely Margaret and I kind of left her eyes blank for the time being because as most people know I'm not a realist artist I'm more on the abstract side as you can tell from the art behind me so I'm still gonna keep it faithful to my original style and the fact that Margaret is known for her big eyes and that is something I love doing myself uh, we're gonna have some fun today so today I will be painting the face of Margaret purple why you ask because purple might be one of the best colors and my queen margaret deserves nothing but the best but today we're going to use a variety of different paints just like in last week's video i'm going to use a variety of i have these water-based paints but i'm only probably going to use the purples and the blue i'm going to use these little leftover paints i have so this is just to show even if you don't have much paint at home you can gather a bunch of scraps and really make something amazing so i'm gonna use this little white oh and this is like a time for time for crafts basic but i'm pretty sure i bought this at the dollar store so white we have acrylic blue and we got purple and then i am going to use amsterdam which is probably one of the better paints in the selection um as my main base for my purple and I'm gonna use my Saks True Heavy Flow for my white, and I will use a bit of black, which is just this beautiful liquid acrylic that I found in the bottom of all my art supplies. So today it's really just to show you, like, you don't need much paint, especially if we're gonna do a tiny painting. Oh, yeah. Okay, so while I get ready, you hang on, do what you gotta do, go to the bathroom. I got a little commercial for you, and I will be right back. This flat tire needs a man, but when there's no man around. When there's no man around, Goodyear should be. Why? Watch this. New Goodyear Double Eagle carries its own spare inside. Lifeguard safety spare. A tire in a tire. Keeps on going. Next time, give her a second chance. <laughs> If you would like to see more of my face and content like this where we explore the life of artists, please remember to like this video and to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It would honestly mean so much to me. 
Margaret would end up moving with her daughter to San Francisco where she got a job painting furniture and cribs. It didn't take long for her to meet her soon-to-be second husband, Walter, when she moved to the big city. She was a single mom and at risk of losing custody of her daughter. Her second husband, Walter, would turn out to be the most worst annoying person and liar, but at the time of meeting, he was a fraud and a real estate agent. Before I go any further, I must point out that there are three sides to every story. Yours, mine, and the truth. And the truth is, there's no one besides the people involved that can truly say what happened. So, as I said earlier, this is my interpretation of events. And I must let you know that Walter's family have defended him in the past and even until this day. So take that information from both sides with a grain of salt. The truth is, no one will ever really know. But I'll even leave a little video of Walter's nephew in the description below if you want to see the family's perspective. Walter and Margaret met at an outdoor fair in San Francisco in the spring of 1955. They both, in later years, would have very contradicting memories on the exact details. He says that she came up to him saying she loved his big eyes, and she said that he came up to her in his charming ways. One thing that everyone agrees on, though, is that Walter was a ladies' man, and Margaret maybe a little bit more on the naive side, but truly a product of her time. Walter Keene, a big part of the story, was born on October 7, 1915 in Lincoln, Nebraska. Walter passed away on December 27, 2000 in California. According to the internet, he attended the Los Angeles City College, but would go on to lie about this when he met Margaret, saying he studied art and lived in Paris. Walter became very, very famous thanks to his wife, Margaret. He would become one of the most famous artists, and later con, in America in the 1960s. He had one child, who he did not tell Margaret about, named Susan Hale Keene. I really hope I said your name right who, by the way, can we show some love to? It's not her fault this happened to her. She is also a painter and works with oils. Well, she was born in 1947, making her three years older than Jane. Walter would have more children, but according to my research, they were born after the Big Eye scandal. That, of course, we will get into, but I must build up to that. He had a daughter named Chantal, who, not sure, but I found some source that said she was born in 1970, and another child of the name of Sasha, born in 1973. Walter was a creative man. He even made these sock puppets with big eyes for a TV show, which is true, and I'm just stating facts, way before he met Margaret. His family has even stated that they have seen him paint. When he met Margaret, he was secretly, well, because on weekends he would tell everyone he was an acclaimed painter and friend showing his art and actively participating in the San Francisco art scene. Well, he was ashamed about the fact that he was actually a pretty successful real estate agent handling properties in Berkeley, California. When he met Margaret during that spring fair, they hit it off. He said all the right things and she believed him. They married soon after meeting, as I said earlier, truly due to the threat of her beloved daughter being taken away as an unmarried mother, according to the government, was not a fit mother. So Walter came in to save the day. The first two years of their marriage went well. She painted all the time. They would occasionally kind of paint together. Well, she would paint and he would gaze and tell extravagant stories. Walter still wanting to become a full-time painter was truly hustling his heart and even Margaret's. Thing is, both their styles did not fit in with the contemporary art of the decade, and he was kind of a joke. He ended up finally convincing a beatnik bar called Hungry and I to let him rent their walls so he and Margaret could try to sell their work. The owner, Enrico Banducci, agreed and let them hang their paintings for a price on his walls. Well, the corridor to the bathroom walls, that is. Walter would spend all his nights at the bar located on Jackson Street while Margaret was at home with Jane. Walter was a good salesperson, and Margaret knew that. So she saw this lifestyle as business. Everything was fine until one night there was a brawl between the owner of the club and Walter. And well, probably due to a boring night in San Francisco, the brawl made the paper and so did Big Eyes. Here's how it apparently went down. Banducci threw a punch at Walter for using obscenity in the presence of a lady. The Chronicle 
who is the outlet that shared the story, wrote, Bonici punched Miss Walter and struck a woman, Nadine, in the collarbone. Walter was arrested for drunkenness. The injured woman, Nadine, sued Banducci, and both Walter and Banducci sued each other over the fight. However, it is not known whether Walter and Banducci <laughs> sued each other intentionally or for publicity. That's when the story becomes really unclear, but it's around this time that Walter started taking credit for the piece in the Chronicle article. I honestly believe that the movie got it right. It started with a little lie by accident and escalated, but people were interested and they sold all the big eyes art pieces the next day. Well, in the film, they sold them the next day. In actuality, I have no exact clue how long it took them to sell all their paintings, but they did. It was a while before Margaret found out what was really going on at the club, that, Wal that in fact, Walter was claiming her art as his own and retelling extravagant stories of her creative process to all the ladies. Walter's career blew up. Plus, with the help of an inside man at the Chronicle, he was able to leak his own stories and find famous people to paint and give paintings to. He did the business of art very well. It went so well, they would open the Keene Art Gallery in 1960. But let's rewind a little bit. Margaret, she definitely knew Walter's ways by then. It's said that she would find out about the whole thing like he was taking credit for art when she overheard him going to surprise him at the beatnik club one day and she could overhear him talk about her creative process to all these random people. She must have been so pissed. The movie Big Eyes by Tim Burton did such a good job in this scene really depicting depicting how she felt and uh, her portrayal of how it actually conspired and you really feel her emotion. Amy Adams is such a good actress. She agreed for his manipulation and with the notion that female artists just weren't as successful, which isn't true, but definitely something she believed and definitely something Walter made sure she believed. And with all that, she would end up becoming a secret Big Eyes factory, creating all the time in her studio. Her creating nonstop, and Walter, well, he was the face. They ended up painting countless celebrities and became a huge topic between art critics and different art groups and circles all across America. Well, their idea that Walter was a joke kind of became more and more true when Walt would discover the magic of print. Knowing that the middle class wanted to be part of this key movement, like they would just rip off posters everywhere. So he began to charging them for those free prints, which would lead people to imitating those prints. And it became a huge trend. Margaret has admitted herself in later life that she was very shy and timid. All she wanted to do was paint. So honestly, she didn't really question it too much when it first really started. But then Walter, he got greedy. And his lies to his loving, devoting wife started to unravel. Turning him a little, let's say, mad. Apparently, he did try to paint the big eyes, something that they did show in the movie. And apparently, according to the internet, um, he even had Margaret try to teach him how to do it. But like I said earlier, no one knows the truth besides the people that were involved. So we'll never know. What we do know is that in those days, the husband had the last word. So I can't imagine how that must have felt for Margaret and Jane being in that situation. It would have been really scary. While Walter was in bliss and doing everything to promote his career, he really wanted to take over the world. And you know what? He kind of did. Making his art affordable to the masses. Keens were on postcards, china plates, magnets. You think it? They had a big eyes on it. He mastered the art of mass production. A 1965 Life magazine story even called Keane's work, The Big Eyes, the most popular work of the time. He would get Margaret to paint his masterpiece for UNICEF, a project that brought so much anxiety to their already rocky marriage. The painting was horribly received and Walter was Super bit. He became more and more possessive of Margaret and their secrets. 
they would end up living in a giant house with a massive pool and would even have celebrity friends over. But unfortunately, Margaret wouldn't really meet these celebrity friends as she was locked in her little studio for up to 16 hours a day. Plus, with Walt's constant supervision, it's said that when he was away touring the world and being unfaithful to Margaret, he would call every hour to check up on her, making sure that she was still painting. That's literally a prison on so many levels. He would even threaten to kill her on multiple occasions, stating that if you tell anyone, I'm going to have to knock you off, according to The Guardian. I wasn't there. And apparently, he would do these threats multiple times, especially when drinking. And it was so bad, Margaret would end up getting rid of her and Jane's dog in fear that Walter would kick him or hurt him during one of his drinking rages, which honestly was almost every night. Whew, the story is getting a little dark, don't you think? But I promise, karma shall painting up and say woo she looks like an alien we're giving her some huge eyeballs um i don't think it looks like my source image anymore but honestly right now i'm vibing with this story and where my painting is going so i'm just kind of gonna ignore my source image for a little bit and maybe at the end when i can add my highlights i'll go back to it but i honestly think i'm gonna give myself a bit of liberty with this one to not make it look exactly like the person because it's margaret key when else would i have an opportunity to give big eyes to someone and it not being weird today i say today she finally left walter and her and jane moved to paradise hawaii i feel like it was a similar situation as her first husband they had to escape and they did when she moved, she was still making paintings for Walt under fear of his threats. But that would all change one day when she finally let ladies in her house. You have to understand that even if she was in paradise, she was deeply scared and let nobody in. But she finally decided something clicked that day to let those ladies in. And those lovely ladies were Jehovah's Witnesses. And what they had to say, well, it clicked with Margaret. She joined the Jehovah's Witness in the late 1960s, and her divorce with Walt was final in 1965. Woohoo! She was living her life with Jane in paradise and rediscovering her love for art. She would end up marrying one last time, and like they say, third time's a charm. Well, this one sure is. And the more I found out about him, the more happy I am for Margaret. She married Honolulu sports writer Dan McGuire in 1970. As I mentioned, she would continue to send paintings to Walter, even being so far away and everything going on in her life. It's said that she sent about 20 to 30 big eye paintings to him once she moved to Hawaii. Where's my white paint going? There it is. This would last about five years until she finally decided enough was enough. Thanks to Jehovah, her new supportive circle and her sexy husband by her side, she went to San Francisco in October 1970. She would go there to do an interview with a talk show, not a radio show, contrary to popular belief and the way it was depicted in Big Eyes. I know, I'm disappointed too. Well, the news made it to Walt and the art scene pretty bit. Everyone was shook it, even Walter to discuss her art but once they mentioned her husband it just kind of all slipped she just kind of kind of let it all hang loose for the world to hear and now sit back and i'll be right back after this commercial break a to hawaii on continental's economy discount ticket here are the camp pieces on their way home from hawaii on continental's economy discount ticket and this is what happened to them in between The money they saved flying on Continental, they spent in Hawaii having a good time. The Campeses will never be the same. Ooh, you're back. Thank you so much. I'm still painting and we still have a bit of the story left. In November of 1970, Margaret would end up challenging Walter to a paint off in Union Square. But the thing is, Walter never showed up. He countered her invitation by saying that she was a boozy sex star psychopath. Wow, nice words, Walter. Mm -hmm. 
Fun fact time! In 1972, her painting, Eyes on Us, was stolen from a dentist's office, and the owner didn't end up seeing it for 50 years. And what makes the story particularly interesting, it was actually a painting of his daughter, but an auction house would end up getting the painting back to the rightful owner's hand. What a beautiful story. In 1980, Margaret finally decided to sue Walter. As you can imagine, he was going on and on talking smack about her because when she would end up actually telling the world this truth, he didn't admit to it. He denied it and would end up denying it until literally on his deathbed. Like he was like denial, 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 denial. So she finally had enough and decided to sue him. They ended up going to trial in 1986, which is a huge difference compared to the movie because in the movie it was like two years later. This was actually like 20 years later. Walter did though, just like in the movie, represent himself. And this whole court session fiasco would last three and a half weeks. It's even told that Walter was so extravagant that they actually had to like tone it down in the movie. There's even one point where the judge threatened to put duct tape on his mouth so he would stop talking. That's how bad it was. Margaret would end up suing Walter for slander for $3 million. And because Walter was being so ridiculous and how can you prove who did who, the judge would actually go on to tell him to do a paint off. So they gave, he gave them one hour to both complete a simple big eyes sketch or painting. And that's exactly what happened. And that's what happens in the movie. So if you've never seen the movie, definitely go watch it just for that scene. It's so good. Margaret would end up painting in, what was it, 53 or 56 minutes, a little boy behind a barbed wire fence looking kind of scared. That would be called Exhibition 224. As for Walter, the movie is pretty accurate. He made every excuse in the book not to paint, even citing a sore shoulder. In his defense and what his family keeps claiming, he was an older man, but like, come on, Walter. Are you serious? Margaret would end up being awarded, so she won, four million dollars, woo! But she never saw a dime because Walter would spend the rest of his life pretty broke and he spent all his fortune on booze and God knows what up until that point. Walter apparently was so poor and like, you know, some people would choose to do this, but he wasn't that type of guy. He was actually living in a little shack at the end of his life. Bonus fun fact! <laughs> The story that would become her film was actually in works for 11 years so they could make sure everything was fact checked. Her third husband was a good natured sports columnist from San Francisco and a super fan of the 49ers. He was born in Kansas City and he had a 43 year career as a sports writer. He's actually an alumni from Berkeley graduating in 1939. He would end up joining the Berkeley Daily Gazette, which is like the newspaper of the school, in 1941. He would move on to the sports desk at United Press in San Francisco. But as timing would happen, he was sent to Honolulu in, in 1944, originally as a war correspondent. A lifelong dream since a kid, McGuire would actually end up joining the 49ers as their publicist in 1950. He was married before Margaret, but would end up in divorce in 1960. Unfortunately, Margaret's third husband did pass away many years ago now at the tender age of 65. Bonus fun fact! A painting she did of the Jerry Lewis family in 1962, where she painted the whole family dressed as clowns, was lost but finally auctioned in May 2018, which actually ended up being a very important lost painting, and no one has seen it in over 30 years. The painting included 15 subjects, and Margaret, the funny lady she is, has called it her most gymnastic work yet. How much are Margaret Keane's paintings worth anyways, you might be thinking to yourself? On the low end, one of her paintings can sell for about a thousand, and then you got the higher end, and those go for about 45000 The painting that was the most ever painted, the most expensive Margaret Keane painting, was auctioned off for $45,000. The piece was a portrait of artist Zaza Gabar. The painting was auctioned off on April 14th, 2018, and is still an avid member of her church and community. She even still runs a little gallery.
And I am done for today. And this is my final piece. My interpretation of the lovely Margaret Keene. Uh, With that, I really want to thank you for being here. And I just want to share my thoughts pre-research. Well, I knew she was Tim Burton's favorite artist. And I did see Big Eyes. So I did know a a bit of a base. So um, definitely a fan. It was really sad what happened to her. But also she's a product of her time. So as much as the story is scandalous, it's not that far-fetched. My thoughts post-research. The movie did a really good job. There's only a couple of minor things just like... I get why they did the radio show in Honolulu, but in real life, it actually happened in San Francisco. And um, also, I didn't realize that it it stretched for so much time. Like, that's 20 years. And then he was just, like, bashing her this whole time, and she's just trying to get over her life. Um, So I learned a lot. It was super interesting. I hope you learned a thing or two. And don't forget to like and subscribe and press the notifications and all that jazz. And I will be here again for another paint and shine. You guys are still here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and remember to like and subscribe.